artist and educator in San Antonio, Texas. Welcome to Saturday Morning Discovery. Today's project, we will be making a fiber arts wall hanging. You won't need a lot of materials. Um, it's gonna look a little something like this. And mine was inspired by nature. Um, but again, you can create anything you want. It can be a character, it can be a landscape scene, and you're not gonna need a lot of materials either. It's basically upcycled materials at home, like an old t-shirt, some felt, and a stick. Just a stick from outside. It's real easy to make and a lot of fun. So let's dive into those materials. Some of the materials you'll definitely be needing will be tacky glue. This is very important. It's the best glue you can use for this project, especially if you're using burlap, which is another material. The burlap will be the base. It's a very porous material, so that's why the tacky glue is most important. You'll also need any scraps of material that you might have. You can find a, um, an old t-shirt, or if someone in your family is a seamstress, they might have some scraps that you can use. Um, some sticks, if you don't have any sticks and you wanna go to a craft store, you can buy a wooden dowel. And again, we're using burlap as a base, but if you don't have burlap, you can use any fabric. This is just a little piece of cotton fabric I got at a fabric store. And if you have old clothes that you wanna use, like I have an old pair of pants, I'm gonna cut this up to add little flowers around my project. Now, if you don't want to use tacky glue, another suggestion is this double-sided fabric tape that you can also get at a fabric store. It's pretty inexpensive and it works really well. And then you'll also need either markers or pencils to draw out your shapes onto your fabric. And that's about it. So let's get into the project. To begin, you want to think about what it is you want your piece to be about. For me, when I made the bird, I sketched it out. And for this one, I'm gonna be making it about the monarch butterflies that are in migration at the moment. So I did a sketch, so you'll need you know, your sketch paper and a pencil. But you wanna think about your character, your scene, whatever it is your image is gonna be, you wanna think about the shapes within it. You wanna break everything down into shapes. That's the easiest way to go about this. So I went ahead and I sketched out my butterfly. And I went ahead and I broke everything down into shapes. Then I'm taking my fabric, and that's another thing you need to think about. You need to think about your composition and the colors you'll be using. So you wanna find the fabric that will relate best to your image. So for my flower, I want it to be red, so I got my red fabric. I want my butterfly to be black, so I have black fabric. And then I'm gonna take some of these scraps and start to layer on top, just like I did with my bird. So now that I have my butterfly already sketched out, I am going to start with the flower. And what I did is I got the red fabric and I got a white crayon, or you could use a white colored pencil, or if you have a black marker, whatever you have available, you're just gonna sketch it out onto the fabric. I am doing two at a time, but you don't have to do that. I'm gonna cut it out and then I'm gonna to start to plan out the composition on my burlap. So let's get to cutting the flower first. So here's my flower all cut out. And like I mentioned before, I had two pieces of fabric, so I have two. The reason why I did that is because I was using dark fabric and I used a white crayon to draw on the fabric so I could see it. And I don't really want those white lines to show. So I'm using the one that was cut behind it. It's just my aesthetic. You, if you like the white lines, you can leave them. And in fact, you can even draw on the fabric when you're done with the piece to add details. And we'll get into that once we're about to finish. So let's have one more look at the flowers. That's how it looks. And I'm just starting to plan out where it's gonna go. And based on my drawing, which I've already cut out a green stem, I'm gonna start thinking of my composition. I wanna know or make sure that I have enough room to fit the main subject, which is my butterfly. So the butterfly is gonna fit right about here. And now I cut out these two leaves. I cut out two at a time. And again, if you don't have two pieces of fabric that you're putting together like so, you can always take your fabric and just fold it over. You'd fold it over and then you'd sketch out your image and then you'd cut it and you'd get two in one. So 
Now that I have my flower, I want to look at the next shape that I need to cut out, which would be the yellow center part of the flower. Then I'm going to break down the shape of the butterfly and its wings. And then I'll start to glue it all down. And then I'm also going to show you how we're going to remove some of this uh, threading so you'll be able to have room to weave your stick in. Let's do the, the yellow part of the flower next. So where is my yellow fabric? I have some little pieces here just scraps and if I look at my drawing I'm kind of comparing and even to the first sketch I did and that looks like it's a perfect piece. So you can eyeball it, you don't have to be precise. This is all about just filling up the shapes that you need or cutting out the shapes that you need. Doesn't have to be perfect. So that looks about the size I need and you just go back and forth. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to start to think about, I'm going to turn it that way and lay out my leaves. That looks good. So now I'm going to think about this shape. And I'm going to get my green. And again, I fold it over like so. And since this isn't a dark fabric like the red, I can use a marker, a washable marker, just to draw out that shape. So I'm just going to sketch it. And again, I'm cutting two out since it's folded over because I don't want you to see these lines. So let me cut that out now. So I've cut out the body of my monarch butterfly and the next step is to cut out its wings. So in order to keep the proportions correct, I'll take the body of my um, monarch butterfly and I laid it down on the black fabric. Then I went ahead and since this is dark fabric, I used a white crayon to draw out the body. I did it pretty sketchy and that's okay because I folded over the dark fabric so that way I can cut out two at once and you won't see these marks once it's cut out. So I went ahead and cut out the butterfly wings again two in one so you don't see the marks that I use to sketch it out. And I use my drawing as my comparison or base. And what I wanna do now is you're probably, if I move this, you're like, oh, this just looks like a weird shape. But we're gonna give it some definition by cutting out some of these little pieces to follow the pattern. So I'll cut out different, I even like this one. I might cut out like a shape like this and I'll glue it here, so that way you can start to see the difference between the wings. So whatever it is that your, your image that you chose to create, think of how you can layer things on top, how each element of your drawing or landscape or characters, how you can start from the head and build up to the mouth or nose, or if you're doing a landscape, you can start with the mountains and then build up forward to the trees. Whatever it is you're doing, you wanna start from the back round up to the front. So these are the wings. Again, I'm gonna cut out some little shapes to give it definition. Here are my butterfly wings all cut out and I have all of the little details within the wings cut out and placed where I'd like them to be. Now before I start gluing everything down, since this is one of the main focal points of my entire piece, I'm gonna go ahead and glue all of these small elements onto it. And you can do the same, so if you have uh, your landscape, if you're doing the mountains and you want to add little trees in front of it, you would glue those little trees to your mountains and then you can glue the mountains to the burlap or the fabric that you're using. Again, you're always building up. So once you're ready to glue the actual piece down, you want to make sure all its little elements like this are attached to it. So let me do that now. Here is my finished butterfly wings. I added or glued all of the little elements to it. Now that it's not going to fall apart. So when I'm ready to glue everything to the fabric piece, whether it's your regular cotton fabric or burlap, it's ready to go. You don't have to sit there and glue each little one on top of each other. But what's more important before we get into gluing all our pieces to our fabric, we need to create the slits or the little openings at the top of your burlap or like I said, if you're using regular fabric, I'll show you how to cut little holes in this as well. But the burlap is a little more intensive. 
If you look at your burlap, you have diagonal and vertical weaving. What we want to do is we want to pull out the vertical weaving from one side. If you can see on this side, I cut it and it's nice and straight. You can always just move it like so and kind of loosen it up. Or you can already take this side that's already nice and frayed. And you want to leave a, a little bit of a, like maybe half an inch from the top. So I'm gonna leave maybe four or five, probably more. So I'm gonna pull one, and it might be a little tough first. There we go. Once you start to pull it, you can see it starts to bunch, right? And you want that. So I'm pulling it completely out, and I'm gonna save these little pieces of string because I'm gonna probably use them at the bottom for some um, extra decoration. So I'm just pulling them aside, opening up that weaving. I'm gonna pull one from over. Well, I'll do it over on this side, that'll be fine. And you want the, the opening that you're creating, you want it to be the width of whatever stick or dowel you'll be using to weave through it. So let's say if I'm using this stick, I want it to be at least that size or bigger so I can weave it through. So I'm gonna pull out a bit more. I'm gonna go a little down. And the reason why I'm doing this before I glue down my image is because while the, your images or elements are drying and gluing, you don't want to be moving your fabric and everything fall off. So we want to get this done beforehand. And it could be even one of the first things you do. So that way you can just jump into gluing down. And that looks pretty, pretty good. There we go. That'll work. I'll just break that off if I need to. Now I'm gonna work on the bottom part. Now I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with these little strings that I saved to create some bows, some like weaving techniques to give it a little more detail. So I'll go ahead and pull out a couple here at the bottom. I don't need to pull out as much as I did at the top because I'm not gonna weave a stick through but you can weave a stick through the bottom as well to give it weight at the bottom if you care to do so. So I have an opening right here. Let me pull out one more from above it because I wanna take these pieces, there we go. You can see how it's starting to open. So what I'm gonna do, and this is just an extra step if you wanna get a little more detailed. If I open up that opening, like so. You can use a pencil as well. You can kind of open it up like that. I make two little holes on one side and then I can take one of these strings and go underneath, pull it through, and then go through that hole. If I can get it. There we go. So once I do that, I can just tie a bow and add that extra, oops, I can't do this. Here we go, there. You do like so, and either mom, dad, brother, sister can help you with that if it's a little difficult. And there you go, look, I have one little bow. And if I care to do so, I could do it all the way across to give it a little detail at the bottom. So I went ahead and I finished my little bows at the bottom, and now I'm gonna go ahead and weave my stick through the top. So I will grab my stick, which I think I'll use this one because it's, yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, it's a huge, like, long stick. So I'm gonna trim it down just a little and break it there. And again, just like I did on this side, where I opened up the weaving so I can put these extra little pieces of thread through, I'm gonna do the same over here. So just using my fingers, I'll open it up and you wanna do more than you did at the bottom because you really wanna make sure that stick's gonna stay inside the burlap. And once I do the stick on this side, I will show you how those of you who are not using burlap, how you can create the same effect but using just regular old fabric. So I'm putting it through each hole like so. 
And burlap's pretty tough, so don't be afraid if you pull some out. That's okay, you can trim it. Ugh, might get stuck a little, just be patient. Open up the holes like so. So the stick is weaved through the burlap. And now what I wanna show you is how you would do the same thing to a regular piece of fabric. So whether you're using an old t-shirt or some fabric you got at the fabric store, what you wanna do, same thing, you wanna make sure you have room at the top and then some room at the bottom. All you have to do is fold these edges over like so and do little snippets. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna add a little more actually, just to make sure. And do little snips, maybe, you know, you can eyeball it, you can measure it, it's really up to you. And especially at the bottom, if you wanna do the bow, you would wanna do two like so. You do two next to each little slit because you can get some yarn or other string that you might have and you do the same thing. I'm just taking this from the burlap, but again, if you have extra yarn or even some old ribbon, even the shoelace, an old shoe with a cool colored shoelace that you like, you can use that. So if I weave it through so, then look at that. I can make a bow right here. And it would look better if I had colored yarn, but you get the idea. See what I'm doing? So I would do it all the way across the bottom. And I'm gonna do the same thing at the top, but I don't have to do two. Since I'm not doing a bow, I'm just weaving the stick through the top. You're just doing maybe like five. Again, fold it over and do your little cuts. One, two, three. Three, four, and five. So after you create those uh, little openings, you slide your stick through, and the same thing at the bottom. You can finish up with ribbon, yarn, string to add that extra element at the bottom. And once this is done, your stick and your, your elements at the bottom, now you're ready to glue everything down, which is what I'm gonna do. And remember, we, here we go, here's the proper side. What I wanna do first is just lay it out. It's all about composition. Keeping in mind your bottom part, and if you this is where you can start to alter things, if needed. So you're laying it out, thinking of your composition. My flower goes there. I think I, no, it's there. Leaves. Once you lay it all out, you'll get your tacky glue. And I don't mind, for me, I don't mind that I see the blue marker because it adds a little definition. And in fact, what I'm gonna do for my butterfly is since I still want more design into the wings, I will get my white crayon. Um, and once I glue everything down, I'm gonna add some like little circles like so just to add a little extra detail. And you can do that too with whatever it is you created. For instance, if you did a character or a drawing of a landscape, you can come in with markers, like I could do some definition between the petals. Um, I could even get a black marker and add some dots to make it look like seeds. And I'm definitely gonna get a black marker to create the curve of the butterfly body and I'm gonna use a black marker to create his eye and mouth and then as far as these I might not add them maybe I'll add them when I'm completely done but we'll see so it's ever-changing it doesn't have to be perfect so let's there I look I feel happy about this composition and now I'm ready to glue it down. I'm not gonna move anything because I like where it's at. I'm just gonna lift it up and take my glue. This one's nice and full. If you're using burlap, remember I had mentioned it's pretty porous, it's open. So if you're working on a table, the glue might go through and get on your table. Just keep that in mind. So you might wanna move 
your project around so you don't accidentally glue it to the table. That's happened to me before. But no need to worry. There we go. So now I'm just gonna do, see, I can feel it sticking to the table, but that's okay. See the glue coming through? All right, so now I'm just gonna do the rest. And now I'm just finishing up with tiny details. I added little marks on the butterfly. I added his eye and his smile. And the final step would be to take some yarn and tie it on one side and the other so you have something to hang it by. And this is our completed project. I hope you enjoyed today's burlap fiber arts project and we'll be seeing you next time.